Hello everyone, welcome back to another x 11 video. Today we're going to be doing another tutorial. Uh, we're going to go back into the FMC. So I'm going to explain things a little more in depth and cover uh, everything with my cursor on. You can see it. Yay, you can see my cursor. It's kind of important when I click things, isn't it? Alright, well, let's go and jump back into the cockpit here. Alright, here we go. Alright, so, what we're going to do here, I'm going to show you how to bring up SimBrief, how to plan, you know, everything like that. Then we'll get actually into the aircraft itself, so I'm actually going to go ahead and up here and I'm going to pause the simulator. That way I don't keep running on fuel. I'm going to go and bring up, uh, you'll see I already did the SimBrief, but uh, we'll start it over. Uh, the way you'll sign up on SimBrief.com, go to Dispatch System, New Flight. And we're going to be American Airlines. Flight, we'll say 59. From, we're going to be flying from San Francisco to LA. So put in the correct identifiers. It gives me an alternate airport in case something happens. Airplane, going to go and choose the, uh, this is what I created. You can choose the default Boeing 737-800. Um, there's not really any difference. It's just I created this one. Woohoo. All right, it goes ahead and tells us we're going to be departing runway 28 right. We're going to arrive runway 07 left. It gives you all the information you need, the route that you're going to take, including the SIDS and, star the SIDS and STARS. We're going to go ahead and click the Analyze Route button. It's going to tell us total distance 322 nautical miles, a, point, uh, sorry, a plus 9.9% .9 distance compared to just a straight route. That's fine with me. We're going to take this, we're going to go up, we're going to hit, say, first X, we're going to click Sky Vector. And I'll show you why we're doing that in a second. Go back to SimBrief. Then we're going to click, click Generate Op, or OFP, the Operational Flight Plan. Yes, we want to generate it, and we'll wait for it to load. All right, it's loaded, so now we're going to scroll down. It's going to tell us total airtime, one hour and four minutes. Luckily, y'all won't have to sit there with me for an hour and four minutes. We can fast forward through all that. It's giving you the basic information, routing, uh, and everything like that. But we're going to go and scroll down to the more important things. You'll see here, it gives you how much fuel you need to have, 5,740. Important here, it's in kilograms, not in pounds. Just keep that in mind. So if you look up here, you see units, KGS, okay, important. Um, so 5,740 kilograms. We're going to scroll down here. This gives you your basic routing, um, which, by the way, if you want to know every single one of these pieces of information, you click the how do I read this flight plan, and it'll take you through everything. It's pretty awesome. It's just like a default one. You can kind of just like put your, you know, cursor basically over like a word, and it'll tell you what, what that portion of the flight plan is. Really cool feature. Anyway, we're going to scroll down. We're going to go and see, okay, flight level is saying max flight level we're going to be hitting today is 350,000, uh, 35,000 feet, not 350,000 feet. Ooh, that'd be high. Uh, that would be where the ISS is running around. Anyway, not really. Actually, that's not true. It's 350 to 400 and something miles. Anyway, totally not related. So we're going to be looking for 350,000 feet. Sounds good to me. Not 350, I did it again. 35,000. 35,000. 35,000. 35,000 feet. Okay. That's important when we get into the FMC. Why you need to know that. So remember 35,000 feet. Next, what we're going to do, we're going to go to the, the, sim, the sky vector. Okay. This shows us your route. We're going to be leaving KSFO, San Francisco. Flying all the way down to LAX. Now, we know we were arriving at LEX at 07 left. According to our sim brief, it told us we are arriving at 07 left. We scroll up right here, 07 left. Okay, so we go back to here. And you're going to see that it indeed has a 07 left here on the... Let me oops, not scroll out like that. Let me move so you can see this better. You can see... You can do ILS, 07 left. We're not going to do ILS, uh, but uh, if you want to see how to do ILS, see the previous video on the FMC. Just look at the, towards the end of the video, and you'll see 
Uh, you just have to put in the frequency, and it operates basically the same way. Uh, we're going to use the actual, we're going to use a GPS. So we're going to hit the approach for runway 07 left, and you notice it's Y. There's two different types. You get the Y and Z approach. Both are the same to the same runway using GPS. There's just two different ones. So we're going to pick this up. And you see here, this is actually tells you everything you need to know about the approaches. Okay. Coming in like this and like this, right? Coming in right in to runway 07 left. That's It tells you exactly what you should be hitting on the way in. The altitude you should be at, uh, degrees you're going to be pointing Anyway, so you'll set procedure North America for arrivals or NA for arrivals at excerpt on V25 westbound, V27 northwestbound. Okay, we're not heading west and we're not heading northwest. That means our arrival is going to be here with the excerpt. Okay, that's important. We're going to be transitioning through the excerpt. All right, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and actually get back into the sim. And we'll get into the actual FMC now. Un uh, yeah, we got to unpause sim. Uh, before we do that, let's go ahead and make sure the weight and balance is correct. 68,000. That's more than I need, but uh, that'll do just fine. Resume the flight. All right, unpause. Now we're going to get to the FMC itself. I'm using X camera. I highly recommend it. It takes a little bit getting used to, but once you get used to it, it's a great camera mod for the X-Plane 11. What we're gonna do now is, clear that, is we're gonna go through the FMC. This is if you've already done all your startup, everything's running, engines are running, your um, IRS is on, I, yeah. IR, yeah, so the, the alignment of the radio system. Anyway, everything's on. You're ready to basically take off right now. Um, so we're actually going to go ahead and go into this itself. You'll see this is the FMC information. Okay, if you click the FMC, which is, these are left, these are right buttons. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. L1 through six, right, R1 through R6. Anyway, so I click the FMC button. This tells you the ident of uh, your FMC, the navigational data. Um, it is active until November 9th. That's good. That means it's November 8th right now, so we're good to go. What we're going to do next is position initial. This is our initial position. I love to switch things back and forth. See reference airport, right? So our reference airport is going to be Kilo, Sierra, Foxtrot, Oscar, which is the uh, our origin airport. So whatever your origin airport is, wherever you're currently at, that's what your reference airport is going to be. Boom. Our gate. If I'm not mistaken, I think we're on D8, but I could be wrong. Actually, I don't think I'll be able to see. So we'll just ignore the, the gate for now. All right, so now we're going to click route. You'll see, okay, you have route destination. Destination is going to be Kila, Lima. Lima, oh my gosh. Kila, Lima, <laughs> Alpha, X ray. And we're going to put that into the R2, R, sorry, R1 button. Boom. You'll see a line just appeared right there. Okay, we'll get into that in a second. Our flight number is going to be American Airlines. Flight 59. Boom. Runway. We could go ahead and say what runway we're taking off here. And we'll do that. So we're going to say we're going to take off runway 28 left. Boom. Now, you can save the route. So if we're going to save the route, all you want to do is type in... Uh, let's say it's Kilo, we'll say Sierra Foxtra Alpha, uh, Oscar, and then we'll type in LAX there and save the route. Boom, now it's a company route. Now you can recall that at any point in time uh, if you wanted to recall one. Actually, I can show you how to do that real fast. Uh, to clear something, you can just, for example, change the airport. Wait, oops. ATL. You can clear the airport literally just by clicking this button right here, and it clears everything. Now to actually pull a company route, we named it Kilo, Sierra, Foxtrot, Oscar, right? And Kilo, Lima, Alpha, X-Ray. Put in the company route. Oh, it didn't. It's not pulling it. 
or did I type in the right? Maybe I typed in the right wrong one. It's supposed to work. I've done it before. Oh, well, it's not working, so... Oh, well. it It's supposed to work, guys. <laughs> it's supposed to work. Anyway, but that's how you're supposed to do it. Um, I'll go back and check make sure it's done correctly. I might have misspelled it, and that could have been it, too. But anyway, does not matter, as we are going to focus more on the... Um, I have this flight right here. Now, perf, int. So we're going to click that. This is your beginning, like weight, how much fuel you have, your cruising altitude, um, it's rever reserves you have, cost index, uh, and transition altitude. Now, transition altitude is only for North America, 18,000 feet uh, in Europe and across the other world. It's different. Um, I don't know the transition altitude, to be honest, outside of the United States. I always fly inside the United States. Um, I do need to learn that, though. It's that way I can do some international flights, but uh, it's nothing... I'm not focused on it right now. Anyway, so to get your initial weight and everything, all you have to do is type the hit the L1 button, and boom, there you go. You get your initial weight, and then your fuel, and everything. So your reserves zero. Cost index just 50. Cost index really doesn't matter that much, guys. Just put 50, and you'll be fine. Our cruising altitude, if you guys remember, was 35,000 feet. So put 350 or you can type out full 35,000, doesn't matter which one you do, and hit that button. Automatically gives you, puts in your cruising altitude, and that's and very, very important, okay? Make sure you put your cruising altitude in. Next, we're gonna go in one limit. Nothing really, we're not gonna touch any of this. Take off, five degrees flaps. So we're gonna hit five, and then put the L1 button, and boom, it automatically gives you your RH level, so your V1, VR, and V2. V2 is 152, 155, sorry. Remember that. Remember that 155, okay? Keep that in the back of your mind. Now we're going to go back to our route page, okay? We got our routes, we got our runway, we got our initial information in there. We're actually going to go down to departure and approach. This is where it can get kind of, eh, I'm not really sure what I'm doing here. Um, departure. So we're going to select departure first, obviously. Go in order of where you're moving. Departure is going to be from Kilo, Sierra, Foxtrot, Oscar. Now, we already have activated our runway 28 left because we put that into the initial ref page. I'm sorry, not the, the route page. See, we put it here. So it automatically transitions over to here and says, okay, you're going to be taking out 28 left, which obviously that is true. Now, what is a SID? So a SID basically is a point in the air that they've marked on a chart saying this is a point where aircraft can use as a reference to approach or depart, I'm sorry, more of a depart in airfield. A star is similar, except it also works on coming out of, um, what do you call it? What they call it, air, air highways and stuff like that. If you guys want to find out you know everything about SIDs and stars like what they are how they're created everything you can literally just google it there's plenty of information out there but uh, SIDs basically going to be on your departures stars are going to be on your approaches okay so what is our SIDs so we're actually going to we're going to bring up sim brief and sky vector again all right so that set sky vector is good with giving you different colors so you can see what's a SID and star this is a SID this is a star okay it's different from your normal uh, points right so we know our SID coming out of San Francisco is going to be the Westla 3 okay whiskey echo Sierra Lima Alpha 3 so we're going to remember that and we're gonna remember I R N M N 1 which is I you can say Iron Man 1 uh, remember that one as well okay and obviously these as well, we have to remember those two. Or you can just use a reference, have it bring it back up, which we'll do. All right, so we got, that's 28, that's active. So we're gonna go and find the Westla 3, SID, there it is. So we're gonna hit the L5 button, right? Now, notice a little thing, another menu popped up and said transition. You don't have to use this. What you can do is you can manually input the transitions which I will do for the uh, approach so you can see how that's done. But 
it's really easy and simple to use transitions. Okay, so just select transition does it for you. So what was our transition? I believe it's eBay. Yep, eBay. So select transition and then hit execute. It's important to hit execute. Don't hit execute. It won't save it into your FMC and it won't matter. Okay, make sure you hit the execute button. What I'm going to do now is go into legs. You'll notice that there's already information inputted. This is our flight level. Remember, remember I said it was important. This is why it's important. If you don't have that there, then your aircraft will not fly 35,000 feet at that speed. It'll just automatically just whoop, go and do whatever. Okay. Now you can manually change the altitudes here. You can type in what you wanted and put it here. Even the speed, you can slash the speed slash altitude and put it in there, and you can manually change it. However, I recommend you stick with what it has. Okay, it's pre-programmed information based on the SIDs and stars. Just go with it, guys. Just go with it. Anyway, so next page, you'll see there's nothing on there. What we're going to do now is we're going to enter the next route, the next point on our route. So we're going to bring back up Sky Vector. Our next point is going to be the Bravo Uniform Romeo Golf Lima. Okay, so that's what we're going to put in to our uh, system. So Bravo Uniform Romeo Golf Alpha. That, that was right, right? That was, was it? No, Golf Lima. See, important to have reference, guys. Golf Lima. Okay, put it in. Now it's going to see it says execute. There's nothing here. Why is there anything here? Well, if you hit execute, boom, there it is. Automatically puts in the information. Now it's important to make sure everything's good. Yep, okay. Now, the approach, okay? The approach, remember I said I was going to mainly input this information. Um, you, again, you can use the transition if you want, or you can manually input the information. This was the manual input. Okay, for the transition. What we're instead going to do next, instead of you know manually putting in the star, which you can do, just like I did that one. You can put any point of the route, like I just did. Any any point. You can change it mid-flight. You can do what any point you can do. You can put into the the FMC by how I just did that that one right there. It's that simple, guys. We're going to do the arrival. So we're going to go back to departure arrival. This button right here. And we're going to hit CK Lima Alpha Extra. We're going to hit the arrival button. And you'll see it says star. Okay, what was our star? Does anyone remember? I remember because it's Iron Man, one of my favorite movies and characters. Now you notice, oh look, there's the transition right there. Again, you could have done the transition. Or you can manually input any point at any time. So I'm just showing you how to do it manually if you wanted to do that. And some routes, depending on how long they are, you'll have to input some manually. All right, now we know we're landing on 07 left. Since we selected the star, we're gonna be limited on what runway we can actually land on. But if you look here, like I'll show you, so these are the runways that these stars can be off of. Now most, it's actually most of them, but that's just how it is. Now we're gonna be heading to runway 07 left. Now you'll notice the Yankee and Zulu, the Y and Z. Again, that is the two different approaches to the same runway using GPS. The reason it has to be that way is because the FMC can't have two runway 07 left, runway 07 left in its system. It screws up the system. It can't have, in the database, it can't have two of the same kinds. It's just the way it is. So they had to put some type of you know, letter after it to deviate the two, and they chose Yankee and Zulu because it's not going to be Lima Romeo, you know, it's not going to get you confused to anything else. So they use Yankee and Zulu. We're going to use the Yankee approaches. Now you'll notice it gives you another transition over here on the right. So you're thinking, okay, why does it have another transition? We're going to go back to Sky Vector and I'm going to show you exactly why it does. So we're going to go down to runway 07 left and see GPS Y, that's the one we want. So again, it shows you the two routes in here, right? But this is all off of just the Y. So there's two approaches into the approach. This is the main approach point, okay, into the, the, the runway. This is what you're called is your final, right? This is the beginning of your approach, beginning of your approach. We're going to fly in 
do the excerpt because it says um, procedure for internet for arousal excerpt on 51 westbound is just telling you right so we're gonna run in from the excerpt right into the runway so what does that mean that means that we need to make sure we transition through the excerpt point and notice how this looks like a star because it is anyway all right so we're gonna jump into the or that's not right anyway ignore what I just said but transition to excerpt okay boom now you see the glide slope on off all right we're gonna have it off standard just what it says and leave it at that okay we're gonna execute it now I'm gonna go in the legs and I want you to look and tell me if you see anything that's wrong did you see it did you see the error boom right there route discontinuity discontinu what does that mean it means there's no information in the computer telling you what you're gonna fly how you're gonna fly from this point to this point how it's gonna work is you're gonna do a direct to do a direct all you're gonna do is take the whatever point you're trying to fly to select it in this case it's gonna be the L3 button and we're going to select the L2 button, which is going to remove this then and replace it with the Iron Man 1. And boom, it moves it up. It's set. Now if we click Execute, it's saved to the computer, and there's no more errors in the system. Wait a second, what's that? That's a vector. That's another error. I wonder how many of y'all caught that. Vectors are not good. They're, it's like another discontinu discontinuity. It's not necessary. It can actually screw up with your uh, your VNAV LDAV. So we're going to actually go with the excerpt again. Same process. Push it up. And you execute. And there you have it. You have the entire system layout planned out now. If you were confused about a part, go ahead and pause the video. Go back. Look at it. Uh, you know, Make sure that your route at least looks similar. I know you could be flying somewhere else. I do recommend that you fly from San Francisco to LAX to make sure that you're doing it correctly. You can check with my own flight and then, you know, you're like, okay, yeah, I'm matching. We're good to go. All right, so that's set. We're good to go there. We're going to go back to the initial reference, to the takeoff reference. All right, 155. Remember, I told you to keep that in the back of your mind. Why? Because, let's see, where is it? There it is. We're going to go ahead and set up our autopilot. 155 is your V2 speed. That's what you're supposed to put for your IAS mock speed on takeoff. Okay, on your autopilot. Oop, my bad, guys. So we're going to go up to 155. Altitude. We're going to go up to our cruising altitude of 35,000 feet. It's important to set the cruising altitude. And heading, we're taking off 280-ish, so we'll put 280. All right. Now, that's set. What you can actually go ahead and do is set these on, but I'm gonna wait till I get right before takeoff to set those on. What I'm gonna ask for now is a push back, so we're gonna go up to the flights, so ground handling. Push back right. Actually, no, push back left. <coughs> Excuse me. I think. Yes. Yes, push back left. That's what I wanted. Because I want to be facing out of this little cubby hole in the, in the airport. We're going to make sure our taxi lights are on. I think they're already on. They're on dim. Yep. I'm just going to do a little pre-flight stuff here, guys. Um, you don't have to follow along with this. Not really necessary. I'm just doing it to keep habit. making sure everything's on the correct information here. All right, looks pretty good. All right, we finished our pushback. Exit that. We're gonna go ahead and taxi now to runway 28 left. 
and I will see you guys down there at 28 left. Alright guys, uh, we're approaching 28 left now. I'm going to go ahead and initiate uh, arm on my auto throttle. Flight director, we're going to turn that to on. Um, doesn't change, we're not going to be activating anything yet. I've already turned on my landing lights. I turned on the fast seatbelt sign. Change on auto brakes to RTO. Had my turn my engines to continuous auto start in case I do lose an engine on takeoff, which could happen. I don't know. You could, I could hit a bird strike. It's happened to me before. I was just gonna have a leisurely flight one time, and boom, bird strike. Left engine. I'm sorry, no, right engine failed, and I was. Yeah, I was like, oh crap, because then my was going to have a leisurely flight turned to an emergency practice, <laughs> emergency situation practice, so. Anyway, we're getting right up here to runway 28 left. We're going to go ahead and say we have clearance to take off. up to the takeoff point of 980. Faster. We're going to keep a little pressure on the yoke. i keep my nose down. Until we hit our VR speed. V V1. VR rotating up. There we go. Oh, we got positive rates. The gear's gonna come up. Four hundred. Four hundred feet. Flaps gonna come up one notch. Wait till we can get a little bit more speed going here. Another flaps here. Beautiful takeoff today. Awesome outside. And final flaps coming in. Final flaps coming in. We're going to go ahead and switch on VNAV. This button right here, right next to the IS Malkin heading. LNAV, right here between altitude and heading. And then we're going to hit the command A. Now I am no longer flying the aircraft. The FNC is flying for me. Period. That's it. It's flying it. It's that simple, guys. It really is that simple. I know some of you are like, what? That's not simple at all. Well, trust me, guys. If you get used to it, it becomes natural. You kind of just like, all right, that's, you know, makes sense to me. We're going to go overhead panel here. Changes to steady and... Uh, well, we'll turn off. Back to zero. And we're going to be cruising up 35,000 feet now. I'll see you at the transition, but to 10,000. All right, 1,000 feet to 10,000 feet. So what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and do our 10,000 feet transition. Go ahead and go up. I'm going to switch this. I'm supposed to do this after, but whatever. And we're going to turn our landing lights off. It should be on, on. Wing goes, oh, wing stays on, sorry. That stays on. Auto. All right. Through 10,000 feet. So I'll see you guys at the top of the climb. Alrighty, folks, we're approaching our top of climb now. Now I wanted to show you a little bit about um, this right here. So you see, this has a uh, TC, that's your top of climb. Uh, it's telling you where on your route your top of climb is. Um, and that you also see a top of descent later on. Uh, but uh, I wanna show you this as well. So if you hit the PROG, 
so say you're in your route and you hit your PROG, which is that means your progress, it's going to show you uh, the distance to certain um, points. So it's going to say from this, give your altitude you're at, fuel, and then it says two. So we're heading to Susie right now, saying we're going to be there in 21 uh, nautical miles. Uh, top of climb, you see that at the bottom says nine nautical miles. Total time, total, uh, what do you call it? Uh, gosh, distance till LEX is 276 miles. This is a cool thing to keep in mind uh, to see. That way, okay, we got 275 miles, so we get to our place. You also see if you go to legs, you'll see each individual leg um, altitude you're going to be at, uh, and you know everything like that. So just keep in mind you can see how long you're going to be until you hit your next point. <laughs> Excuse me, uh, if you want to see that. But I usually keep that progress while I'm flying here. Go back to zero. Let's pop outside real fast, just to show you how beautiful it is right now. Gorgeous out there today. That's a screenshot right there. Let me get a screenshot. That's gorgeous. There's another aircraft in the same uh, going the same route as us. Absolutely gorgeous, man. See, this is why I love X-Plane. They've modeled the lights so well in X-Plane 11. So well. Alright, let's go back inside. Alright. Now. You'll notice speed's pretty slow, right? Well, if you look at the GPS speed, we're going 368 or 88. I think it's 68. 88. Oops. Going 380 miles per hour. So, comparatively, you know, or not, sorry, comparatively, we're going a lot faster than you may expect. But that's because we're up in the airstream and the airstream pushing us. Anyway, so, we're going a lot faster on the ground speed. Yeah, airspeed is 231, but our ground speed is 387. That so, that's why usually when you're flying long distances, you fly high because it's a lot more efficient up high. Now, as we pass through 35,000 feet, there's a couple things you need to do in order to set yourself up for success towards your top of descent. Uh, which, by the way. Top of Descent will be in video number two, part two of this tutorial of the FMC of the Zebo Mod 737-800. That's because I didn't want to take too, too long on individual videos and have you guys sit here for hours and hours or anything like that. No reason for that. Plus, people may want to only see the approach or may only see the departure, so I decided to split them up here. But we're getting close to our 35,000 feet. Just now passing through 34. And now we're turning on. To, yep, see, you just got to announce it. 1,000 to go. Got it. Just turned on to our posy. Now we're heading towards the eBay point, which you guys might remember. Once we hit our top of climb, we will speed up to our cruising I don't know, cruising speed, whatever. Cruise speed. Five hundred to go.
We'll be doing a night landing into LAX, which is going to be absolutely beautiful, guys. LAX is one of the coolest airports to land at night, in my opinion. The lights are just, it's pretty, it's very, very beautiful. Almost our cruise. Really close now. All right, it's going to set our trim now. It's, it's doing all this. It's setting our trim. We haven't hit 35,000 yet, guys, but you'll notice that it's, uh, the speed is now 0.78. Okay, so it's trying to speed up right now. And it's taking its sweet time. Now that noise is this wheel bouncing back and forth. Oh, this is funny. It may take a little while for this to get up to cruising speed. Whoa, there's another aircraft. Holy cow. It's slowly getting there, folks. But anyway, um, so once you hit your top climb, what you're going to do, uh, very simply, if you have a throttle, uh, some type of throttle on like a yoke or a throttle quadrant or on a joystick or something, you're going to bring that throttle all the way back down to zero, to idle. Um, and once you do that, uh, the, the FMC is going to continue to you know, keep your engines up where they need to be. After you have completed that, what you're going to do is you're going to change your altitude and you're going to bring that down to a zero. Okay, so once you get that top of climb, you're at the speed, you're at the altitude you're supposed to be, you're going to bring that speed down all the way to zero. Well, not speed, sorry. Uh, altitude all the way to zero. And the reason you do that, the reason you bring it all the way to zero, because when you go into descent, okay, when you go into your descent, what you'll have happen, if you don't set it to zero, is the moment you hit whatever altitude it's at, your autopilot will automatically hit altitude hold. When your autopilot automatically hits altitude hold, then you're gonna be stuck at that altitude. Obviously, altitude hold, right? That can screw up your descent, and you don't want that. So it's best to go ahead and remove that altitude out of the uh, autopilot down to zero and it'll automatically adjust your altitude okay you don't have to worry about it oh now it's going to nose dive me into the ground no it's not as long as you've only hit the v nav l nav and command and your fmc is set up properly it's not going to nose dive you into the ground so just remember that important part of changing that from 35,000 down to zero Again, I'll say it again because it is that important. Change it from 35,000 down to zero. The moment that altitude hold button goes on, it's going to screw up your entire process. So that's why I keep saying it. Just do it, guys. Just bring it all the way down to zero. Once I hit my top of climb, uh, my speed's gone up. I'm going to do that myself. But I'm waiting for my speed to get where it needs to be which it's almost there, it's really close. And my, uh, what do you call it? Altitude hit its thing. You notice there was the beep, that was the uh, auto seat, seat belts telling everybody, hey, you can get up and move about the cabin now freely. Almost there. You notice it's getting really dark now. So we're actually going to turn on some background lighting just a little bit. I think 
can hear aircraft. I feel like I was hearing an aircraft. Let me change the external here. I think I... Nope, I'm the only one. Or maybe... Yeah. I was hearing him. We go by default here. Alright. Now I've hit our cruise. We're going to reduce this. You notice it didn't drop me any, right? My altitude has not changed. I'm still sitting where I am. So we're going to go and change it all the way down to zero. Important, because you don't want the altitude to hold the head. But now that it's changed it to zero, we're already pre-set up now for our descent. When we get to the descent, uh, we'll go ahead and cover that in the next video, you'll see. And that's going to cover uh, how to set up your FMC, how to initiate the autopilot using LNAV and VNAV, getting up into the air using the auto throttle, and getting up to your cruise and the stages and steps you need to do once you hit the cruise altitude. And I hope you guys have enjoyed. Uh, if you did, go ahead and hit the thumbs up on this video. If it helped you, uh, let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Uh, all the descent and approach procedures uh, using the FMC and autopilot, we're going to cover that in the next video. And that'll be, I'll put that in a little playlist for you guys as well. Um, that way, you know, that way you can just go through it, you know, one after the other if you want to. But anyway, thanks for joining me today, guys. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one.